Before we begin today's video, I'd just like to remind folks that I have a Twitch channel. I usually stream live Q&As, quizzes, let's plays, and much more. So feel free to follow me on Twitch to be notified about every single stream I do. Howdy folks, Jambariki here, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about Pixar's newest animated film, Luca. Luca is a sea creature who works on his family farm, but ties of the boring job of fish herding. However, his parents refuse to let him go explore land. One day, he befriends a sea creature his age called Alberto, who shows him how to survive on land. Alberto convinces Luca that they need a Vespa to travel in freedom. Unfortunately, Luca is caught by his parents, who decide to send him away to the deepest level of the sea, far, far away from humans. So Luca runs from home and decides to live in the local human town with Alberto. The boys meet a bully called Ecole, who teases them for being outsiders, but a tough girl called Julia stands up for them. Julia explains that Ecole wins the town race every year, which consists of swimming, pasture eating, and cycling but she's determined to beat him this year. Alberto and Luca decide to team up with Julia for the race, so that they can use the prize money to buy their own Vespa. So, based on the plot description I just told, you're most likely thinking of a lot of similarities to The Little Mermaid. Yes, the same story beats are there, but I think it would be lazy to just call Luca a Little Mermaid ripoff. Unfair, even. These ideas work, so of course, other literal fish-out-of-water movies will use them too. Luca has a lot of obvious differences to The Little Mermaid as well, enough to make drawing a complete comparison seem unnecessary. The appeal of Luca is that it finds the charm in the simple and small. With so many movies nowadays being about spectacle and theatrics, it's refreshing to just settle down to a cute seaside story set in Italy. Even though we don't spend much time underwater, it's still a fascinating part of the film, because we get a rich perspective of how this world works. I like how the film found a way to depict countryside life in the sea. This isn't a luxurious Atlantean kingdom or a busy city. It's a quiet village where sea creatures herd fish or raise crabs for show. Okay, that's everyone. Mona Lisa, why are you smiling? Anyone else in there? Oh, and it's so cool seeing an anthropomorphic anglerfish, my favorite animal ever. Anglerfish are usually the villain in sea stories, but this guy is just an average bloke. Luca's uncle, to be exact. Plus, his design is so unique, weird, and creepy. I love it! Too much oxygen up here. Not like the deep, as you'll learn. <laughs> what? Sure, there's no sunlight. But there's nothing to see anyway. The world on land, meanwhile, has this relaxing, sunny European atmosphere that's perfect for a summer release movie. I was totally immersed in this quaint Italian town. Everything is just so peaceful and calm. The whole community seems so alive thanks to the natural world building, too. It's all so homely, like we're on a nice holiday. Luca was also directed by Italian filmmaker Enrico Casarosa, so we can have a lot of faith in the movie's depiction of Italian culture. I can imagine some Italian audiences finding the experience to be very relatable and nostalgic. Pasta is a big part of the movie, which may be a stereotype of the country, but it's a cuisine that's heavily tied to the culture. Heck, the pasta in this movie looks so delicious and characters enjoy eating it so much that I had to pause the movie and make my own plate of pasta right away. <laughs> However, as chilled out and beautiful as the movie is, there's still high stakes in the story. So don't assume that the whole movie is about Italian town life. As much fun as these boys are having, they're in constant danger wherever they go. The residents are already fearful of possible sea monsters, terrified even. So these boys cannot be exposed to water or they could be killed on sight. Which is really difficult in a seaside fishing town. Buongiorno Massimo, you'll keep an eye out for those monsters, right? We're all counting on you. Don't worry, Tomato. I've got my eyes peeled. They won't get away. <laughs> Luca also has to be wary of his parents who are on the lookout for him on land and are wetting every human kid they see to find him. So poor Luca is understandably nervous about his surroundings. Uh, Alberto? I think I might have seen my parents. No way, I told you, they're not coming here. But what if they did? The heart of the film, there was a story of friendship. These two boys become the very best of friends, bonding over their love of Vespers and what human culture has to offer. While their personalities are very, very different, they have a mutual desire to embrace freedom. 
Not to mention Alberto's bravery really rubs off on the anxious Luca, making their friendship together vitally important to Luca's character development. Say, silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno, louder. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Can you still hear him? Nope, just you. Good. Now hang on. When Julia's introduction changes this duo into a trio, things certainly shake up for the boys' friendship, because Alberto feels as if that Julia is a threat to his bond with Luca. Despite the underlying tension between Alberto and Julia though, I love seeing Julia's enthusiasm for teaching the boys about human culture, from helping them to learn to cycle bikes, <laughs> All right, try jumping onto it. No, 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 you gotta show it you're the boss. Oh, Santa Mozzarella. Eyes up! Huh? Looking down is what's making you fall. To getting them into the science of the universe. This is a telescope. Old Ben Bernardi lets me use it. It makes faraway things seem close. Luck. Her brash courage and hard work ethics are really inspiring to watch. Little girls her age will totally look up to her because she shows that little girls can be strong, smart, and compassionate. I also adore how her passion for education inspires Luca to want to learn more. So this is how machines fly? Si. And there are big towns called cities? Si. Like even bigger than Puerto Rosso? Like Genova. Literally 20 times bigger. And we're all on a big round rock? Floating around a star in the solar system? So cool, right? Oh, and can I just say how much I love Julia's dad? Even though he only has one arm, he's a badass fisherman, an amazing cook, and a protective father. He's also kind enough to take in these two runaway boys, instinctively caring for them like they're his own kids. Where's Alberto? Uh, he left, Signor Marcovaldo. Do you know where he went? Uh, no, but I don't think he wants anyone looking for him. And maybe not, but just in case. He's such a wonderful, positive role model for disabled kids, and quite possibly my favourite character in the movie. What about the movie's villain? Well, a film like this would usually feature monster-hunting FBI agents as the baddies, but instead we get a town bully. Luke isn't trying to be a grand-scale film, it's a little movie about a small community. So it makes sense that the villain is a more local threat. He's not only an intimidating antagonist, because he's not afraid to hurt kids, but he also seems to be the only one who suspects Alberto and Luca's fishy origins. So we get this villain who is both hyping up how much he'll win this race, which is important to the boys, and on the tale of our hero's secret, making his very presence intensely annoying and threatening whenever he's around. Hey, look who it is, and with no Julia to hide behind. Come on, let's go. No, something's fishy with you two. I mean, besides the smell, you're hiding something. Is it that we're smarter than you? We end up cheering for anyone except Ercole to win, because the movie does such a great job making us hate him. We want him to lose so much just to see his massive ego get destroyed. Oops, school, sir. Oh, can't you on the Downhill! Julia, you never even made it to the downhill. <laughs> <laughs> To conclude, Luca is a cute little movie about finding the courage to take risks in order to achieve freedom, as well as the importance of keeping a good friendship alive, and how parents should let their kids be free. While it might not have the same sense of adventure as most Pixar movies, it's refreshing to see a mainstream studio tackle something smaller and simpler. I can imagine myself casually watching this film again in the future, because it's so laid back and charming. It'll be perfect for cheering me up when I'm feeling down or relaxing me on a warm summer's day. Not every movie needs to be a blockbuster to be good. Sometimes it's nice to have a sweet little treat now and again. What did you think of Luca? Let everyone know in the comment section below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Cheerio, folks!